Okay, guys, um, welcome back. It's been a while since you've watched one of these. This is the first video for second semester. Uh, we are in Chapter 9, and um, in class, hopefully you learned something about quadratic relations um, and the graphs that they form. And uh, moving on to Section 2, we're going to specifically f um, focus on circles. And uh, before we get into the uh, steps, the um, algebra you're going to have to do, um, let's define circle, because I know you know what a circle is, but you may have never thought about the definition. Um, the definition of circle is a collection of points, all points I should say, equidistant, equ hold on, spelling's off, equid equidistant from a fixed point. And so it just makes sense, you know, if you've got a point and then you go all directions the same distance away from that, that's what makes a circle. Um, you know, you know what a circle looks like. Let's see, let me make a point and then with my magic tools here I can expand it and Every point along the edge of the circle is the same distance from that center point. There's the center. Everywhere you go, you're going the same distance. And you put all those points together, all infinity of them, and that creates what we know as a circle. Um, an illustration that I like to use to help remember a circle, I was watching this show once about where crop circles come from. Um, if you uh, get on YouTube and search crop circles, there's lots of cool videos about it, but this one particular um, you know, a crop circle is when a pattern shows up in a farmer's field and, um, you know, they think that aliens came down and made all these circles in their cornfields, but really what ha where these crop circles came from is a bunch of Yahoo kids went out there at the middle of the night and they stuck a stake in the ground, so let's say that's the center, and then they tied, tied a rope to the stake, and then they extended the rope out till it was tight, held on to it, and then just kept walking around in circles. So they smashed down the corn, and because they kept the rope tight, they were always equidistant from that stake, and they made a perfect circle. So then you get another friend with a different length string, and then you get a pattern of circles in the, in the cornfield. So I just think that's a good illustration of all points equidistant from a fixed point. So um, besides that, here's the math that you're going to have to do. Let's start with an example like this. x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 6y minus 56 equals 0. And in your book, some of these are inequalities, and this technically is one in your book, but we'll talk about the shading portion. Let's just worry about getting it graphed first. And from class, you should know what about this um, equation says circle. And just to review, that's because the coefficients of x squared and y squared are the same, and specifically here they're both 1. If we had a number there, you know, all the examples in your book have 1 x squared and 1 y squared. If you had something like 2 x squared and 2 y squared, you could just divide every number by 2, including the 0 on the other side, and then you'd be down to 1 and 1 anyway. So, um, Usually they just go ahead and give you the, the ones there. Okay, so the, the goal here is to put this into standard form or general form and then draw its graph. So we need to know what does general form of a circle look like. All right, we have general form of all sorts of stuff. We have general form of a line like y equals mx plus b or ax plus by plus c and all, you know, all those different forms. This is... You know, the, the equation that's already there, that's a circle, but that doesn't help me graph it. This is the version that's going to help me graph it. Okay. This is general form of a circle with center HK and radius R. All right. And there's nothing wrong with the equation that I wrote in, by the example, but I don't know where that goes. It's like taking... 3x plus 4y equals 12, and turning it into y equals mx plus b form so that I can graph it. This is a line, but it doesn't help me graph it. This is a circle, 
but it doesn't help me graph it. So I want to transform it to make it look like this for graphing. All right, if a circle is based on two things, a center and a radius, making it look like this is going to help me find that center and that radius really quickly. Okay, so first step in graphing this circle. I want to group my x's together. And when I group my x's, I'm going to leave a little space right there where I'm going to put a, a constant that's going to make a complete square. Notice there are two completed squares in my form of a circle. So I, I need to complete an x square and a y square. Um, let's see, I've got y square plus 6y. And I'm going to leave a space to complete the square. And I'm going to go ahead and move that 56 over to the other side. All right, so now if I can complete both of these squares, I'm pretty much done. Remember, to complete the square, which we did when we were doing vertex form of a parabola a long time ago, you take half of B, take half of this, and square it. So half of that's negative 4. Negative 4 squared is 16. Now, you can't just go around throwing 16s in and out like you're the boss of everything. If you're going to put 16 there, you've got to make up for it with a 16 there. Half of 6 is 3, 3 squared is 9, so I'm going to put a plus 9 over here to make up for it. Now keep my equation true. Now to write it as a completed square, when I took half of negative 8 and I got negative 4, that's what goes with x. When I took half of 6 and got 3, that's what goes with y. And then on this other side, 56 and 16 and 9 is, let's see, that would be... 81. All right, and sometimes those work out like nice, neat, um, perfect squares. Sometimes they don't. Uh, if they don't, you just have radii that are not so neat, which is fine. So the circle in question has center 4, negative 3, opposite of this, opposite of this, and it has radius of 9. All right, so just doing those two completed squares gives me all the info I need to graph it. All right, so let's graph it. All right, so let's find uh, center at 4, negative 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3. And radius of 9, so I need to go 9 in all directions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Down. 7, 8, about right there. And then when you draw it, you just do the best you can. I know it's not um, easy for everybody. Some of us are better artists than others, but... Since I have a magic board, I can draw mine like that. So that circle has a center of 4, negative 3, and a radius of 9. All right, so we have graphed it. Uh, that is pretty much what this section asks you to do. Complete the square if necessary, find the center and radius, draw the graph. There's a few problems that ask you to work backwards. Um, you'd have to find the radius. Um, we'll get to those in class. The only other thing I want to show you, technically, like I said, this is an inequality where instead of equals right here, the problem in the book actually has less than or equal to. So this whole way down, if this were changed to less than or equal to, you treat that like you do other inequalities. If it's just less than, you draw a circle with a dashed line. And then if it is um, you know, based on which way the sign goes, we're going to shade either inside or outside. Uh, you can get some rules about less than is inside, greater than is outside. Those are dangerous in case the order ever changes. I like to just test out the origin and see if it works. If the origin makes the inequality true, then every point inside the circle makes the inequality true. So plug in 0 here. I'm just kind of writing over what we've done before. I get negative 4 squared, which is 16. I get 3 squared, which is 9. Those two added together are definitely less than 81, which means that everything inside of this circle would be shaded. 
All right, so I didn't want to do a whole new thing just to show you that if it's inequality, we can shade it, which means that all points inside this cir inside this circle make the inequality true. All right, so that's circles. Main things, definition, all points equidistant from a fixed point. How do you complete the squares to get it into its general form? All right, we've completed squares before. This shouldn't be anything too fancy. And then going from that to where, what's the center, what's the radius, what's the graph? And just graph them as nicely as you can. And you won't take off for floppy circles. All right, guys, so um, welcome back to Flip Notes. Um, and uh, we'll see you in class. Young out.